So the last time we were in class, we talked about Blackboard assignment number 11, which dealt with kind of this idea of evaluating sine, cosine, and tangent in a coordinate plane. And I know we've talked about this before, but we're kind of reviewing a couple key concepts to build us to this understanding of a unit circle. So just as a key review, part one for Blackboard Assignment 11 is given to you um, in this video. We talked about this in class, but more importantly, the idea is we are now going from our idea of SOHCAHTOA, which is S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, and we're now building onto that concept of X, Y, and R, okay? So when we create our triangles in our coordinate plane, our theta is always around the origin. We always connect to our X axes. Our opposite leg from theta is always our Y. Our adjacent leg is always our X. And our hypotenuse is always our R value, which is a radius of a circle. So once you guys have gotten kind of adjusted to now using y over r, x over r, and y over x, these are key things that we're going to want to make sure we know now. So we're evolving from our SOHCAHTOA days into um, using these variables. So we're kind of building this unit circle. And before we get started, the idea of a unit circle, we're going to kind of work away from the easier angles um, to the more... Um, Com not even complicated, but the more detailed of the angle. So we're kind of building on this unit um, idea of a unit circle. So part three, part two actually, had us kind of reviewing what a quadrantal angle is. And a quadrantal angle is if the terminal side, so remember the terminal side of an angle is the one that rotates around your coordinate plane. It's the one, your initial side is the one that stays fixed on the x and y coordinate plane, the terminal one is the one that moves, kind of like a clock. So if your terminal side of theta lies on an axis, then you're dealing with a quadrantal angle. And we actually have five quadrantal angles, even though two of them are coterminal. And those angles are 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then, of course, 360 is one full rotation around our coordinate plane. And 0 and 360 are coterminal. So what you should have in front of you throughout this discussion in this video should be Blackboard Assignment 11, which is what you see here um, in the video, as well as your unit circle, which is on Blackboard. So it says unit circle number 1. We're going to start building onto that as well as your in-class lesson on unit circle one that looks um, very much like this. Okay, so both of the, those are on Blackboard. Make sure you have a chance to print those off before you listen to the full video, or just make sure you have a lot of paper to fill out notes as we continue on with this discussion. So in part three, this kind of continues on from um, a previous conversation. But the idea for part three, we talked about this in Blackboard number nine, is we want to come up with the sine, cosine, and tangent values of our quadrantal angles. And again, zero degrees is the same thing as 360 degrees, right? So they're coterminal. So whatever sine, cosine, and tangent are for zero degrees, they're going to be the exact same for 360 degrees. So we essentially have four different angles and values that we're going to be looking for. So to start out, before I, I really do much of anything else, I'm going to grab a sheet of blank paper, and I'm going to build on this understanding of these quadrantal angles. So what I just drew for you is kind of the X and Y that's part of your unit circle. If you look at your unit circle, there's a vertical line and a horizontal line. So we're going to look at that kind of like we do over here. And around this um, circle here, we have what we know is zero degrees starting us out. 90 degrees is um, straight up and down on your positive y-axis. 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and again, 360 degrees. We also previously talked about this idea that sine, cosine, and tangent now have um, new um, variables that we're looking at, so to speak. We're kind of getting away from SOHCAHTOA, so we're kind of graduating 
to the y over r, x over r, y over x um, way of looking at those three trig functions. And we also talked about the last time in class that we have four quadrants in um, a unit circle, but more importantly in a coordinate plane. And those four quadrants are labeled in counterclockwise, kind of like you're moving in your positive angle degree measurement. And in quadrant one, you know that x is always positive, y is always positive. You know quadrant two, that your x is always negative, y is always positive. Quadrant three is negative, negative, and quadrant four is positive y values, negative x values. And we also talked about that your radius of a circle will always be positive. And we also talked about what that would be in a unit circle, but we'll get there in just a minute. So the idea for all of these is that in each quadrant, so not your quadrantal angles, but in each quadrant themselves, you will have certain sine, cosine, and tangent um, values. Some of them are going to be positive, some of them are going to be negative. So in quadrant one, I know we talked about sine is always going to be positive because your y values are always positive and your r values are always positive. We also talked about cosine always being positive because your x values in quadrant one are always positive and your r values are always positive. And we also talked about tangent also being always positive because your y values that they're equal to are always positive and x is always positive. So as we go around our unit circle, your sign for quadrant um, two is always going to be positive, your cosine is going to be negative, and your tangents are going to be negative. And you guys can follow along by plugging in your um, x and y values for the ordered pairs in each of these quadrants and knowing that your um, radius is always going to be positive. In quadrant three, your sine is always going to be negative, your cosine is always going to be negative, and your tangent will always be positive. And in quadrant four, your sine will always be negative, your cosine will always be positive, and your tangent will always be negative couple key things that I want to point out, um, especially as we get into this idea of the unit circle, okay, is that your sine in the unit circle will be dictated by what your y value is. Your cosine will be dictated by what your x value is. And by what I mean by your x and y, what those values are is, is whether or not they're positive and negative. And your tangent is going to be represented or dictated by basically your slope and that's kind of a, a different way of looking at it but we can talk about that a little bit more in class but a couple things I wanted to show you is your y is your vertical axes your x is your horizontal axes so again your sine is going to be dictated by what your y value is so your sine is going to be positive where your y values are always going to be positive which are quadrants one and two your sine will be negative where your y values are negative. So sine is going to be negative where your y values are negative. Just like sine, cosine is going to be dictated by what your x is in terms of positive or negative. So your cosine will be positive where your x's are positive, which they are. And here your cosine is going to be negative where your x's are negative, which is right here in quadrants 1 and 3. One way to look at your tangent functions is that your tangent will be positive in the two quadrants that when you connect them you get a positive slope and your tangents will be negative in the two quadrants that when you connect them you get a negative slope. So that's just one way to kind of remind yourself what your sine, cosine, and tangent should be in each of those quadrants and that's going to come into play in just a little bit. So, moving on again to what these quadrantal angles are. And again, I'm going to grab another sheet of paper just to start us out. I'm going to draw my x and y coordinate plane just like I did in the other video or the other sheet of paper. Starting off with 0 and 360. We've got 90, we've got 180, and we've got 270. Okay. So the idea with a unit circle, and I'm going to actually bring the unit circle. Um, I'll slide this up for, for just a second. The idea of your unit circle, because when you think of the, the, the word unit, a unit, the word a unit, what comes to my mind is the fact that you have one unit, 
right? So a unit usually represents a value of one. And so the idea of the unit circle is that in your unit circle, you will always, and I can, or we both can, we all can, I should actually say, right at the very top, that in a unit circle, your radius will always be a positive one. Your radius will always be positive, but in this case, it will always be a one. And so in your unit circle, these points on the outside of your unit circle are actually x and y coordinate um, ordered pairs, okay? So this distance from your center to this outer ridge of the circle is one unit to the right. From this outer unit, or the center of the circle straight up, that's one unit up. From this center all the way out to the edge is one unit left, and then one unit down, okay? Because your radius is one. Similarly, these values from your center to the outer ridge are also one. But if you were to create, I'm gonna do this in pencil so I can erase it. The idea of trig is that we get to create triangles, right triangles, from each of these angles, okay? If you can kind of see that on your paper a little bit, they're, they're really light because I wanna erase them. But the idea is, if I wanted to come up with an x and y value for this particular point, it would be very difficult because all I know is that this distance, my radius, or my hypotenuse, is 1. I have no idea what this angle is, and I have no idea what this x and y value are. So coming up with these points right now off the bat are going to be difficult. But the idea is, and as I go through, I'm just going to kind of erase these, uh, my unit circle, because I don't want them there. But the idea is that if I know that from the center to my outer edge is one unit, I can actually write that as an x and y value. So let's kind of explore that idea. So, and I brought this down for a reason. So if I were to create an x and y coordinate plane, and you don't have to take notes on this, you don't have to draw this, I just want to kind of point something out to you. And I'm three units over, three units up, three units to the left, and three units down. If from my center of my origin, my center of my um, x and y coordinate plane, all the way around my unit, if I draw a circle, okay, and it goes through that point, these particular points right here are easy to find because they're on your...